in the system and the liquid hold up in the system. The three, there are three control inputs or three degrees of freedom that we have. They are the outflow of the water, the reject stream, how much of the flow to be taken from the top, and the, how much gas flotation to use. The larger the gas flotation, it is going to be cleaner. We use this model to, to study some optimization. And in chapter number five, in chapter number six, we have a different optimization compared to what we have in chapter number seven. In chapter number six, we try, try to minimize the use of flotation gas, which is entering here. We assume that flotation gas is a utility and we need to minimize the use of utility. To do that, we formulate this optimization problem where we want to minimize the use of flotation gas and constraining it with uh, model equations and certain other things and I'm going to justify these. The PPM out should be less than 30 PPM which is uh, the requirement by OSPAR. The pressure we consider to be between 1.4 bar and 2 bar. Uh, we assume that there are some operational requirements which ask them to be between those numbers. If it is uh, uh, if it is below 1.4, then we have, we will have um, no, we, we, to have natural flow, assuming that the flow, the, the pressure outside the vessel is one bar, we need to have some delta P, and that's why I constrain it to 1.4. And the liquid holdup is constrained between 0 0.85 and 1. Assuming that in operational conditions, if it is, uh, if the liquid holdup is lower than 85%, we start to see gas in the, in the water stream. So, assuming that these are uh, things that we gain from process knowledge or talking to operators, but, um, so this is how I try to formulate these uh, constraints. And then we have these degrees of freedom, the choice of the pressure, the choice of the, how much water to take out here, and how much gas to feed in here. The first result is an optimal steady state result. The, uh, the population densities that I talked about, which are described in terms of numbers per meter cube, and this meter cube is the space, physical space inside the separator, and numbers are numbers of droplets, numbers of free bubbles, and numbers of loaded bubbles. So as you can see, the boundary condition started at, um, at, uh, at 1, described at 1 here and this is the length of the separator so this is the bottom part and this is the top part. So at 1 where we have the boundary condition where gas is injected we see that the free bubble has the highest density which makes sense because that's where we have the maximum concentration of gas because it's fed there. Beyond that it's going to be converted into loaded bubbles so it's going to reduce further going up so that's what happens. We also assume that there is no gas that is going down into the bottom section because the gas where it is injected is going to just flow upwards. That's why it is zero here. On the other hand, loaded bubbles, they start to form when these two combine together and that's why their numbers start with zero here and then they start to increase. On the other hand, droplets, they at the, at the top, they, they are fed, so they have the highest density here and then they gradually start to fall down because some of them are converted into loaded bubbles. And this difference is essentially making it cleaner and cleaner at the bottom. So then we talk about control structure design and through this optimization we found out that the pressure is active. Pressure constraint is active, the PPM out constraint is active and the liquid holdup is also active. Why so? Why so? Because the, the pressure, the lower the pressure, the volume of the gas is going to be higher. So it's going to have effectively more number of bubbles. Higher the number of bubbles, better separation. So it, it means that keeping the pressure as low as possible is more effective for the separation. So that's why the pressure is uh, active at the bottom constraint. PPM, we don't need to clean uh, the water more than what it is required because cleaning it further will require more flotation gas, which is our main objective. So they are clearly, there is a trade-off. And uh, liquid holdup is again active because keeping a liquid holdup lower is good because if, if there is liquid, less liquid holdup, there is more gas in the system. And more gas is going to lead to more attaching of the bubbles with the droplets. 
So uh, we tried to develop a control structure and here we combined the reject flow with the pressure because this stream has the maximum amount of gas so clearly that should be used to control the pressure. Liquid holdup is used to control the or uh, water outflow is used to control the liquid holdup which is also very obvious and the concentration which is directly affected because of the flotation uh, should be used for that and here we used a different uh, feed kind of a feed forward approach where we also take into account disturbances so if the flow suddenly changes then uh, it will have a feedback feed forward approach to con control the concentration so the optimal closed loop results are here we this layer this layer of results or this row of results show the three control uh, variables that we are controlling the pressure, the liquid holdup, and the out uh, ppm concentration. And this is being controlled using reject flow. Liquid holdup is being controlled using outflow of water, and the concentration of oil and water at the outlet is controlled using the flotation gas flow rate. There are some other variables plotted. This indicates the inflow, which is a disturbance to the system. This indicates the, the fraction or the oil concentration in the part that enters the flotation zone after having been separated in the initial separation zone. And then there is also the to inlet uh, PPM, which is set to 150. So we study how this control structure uh, re 